Hi everyone and welcome to my second tutorial on Life is Feudal. Um, after reading a bunch of the comments I've, I've decided to do a uh, bit of a troubleshooting video to help people out. Um, now I'm going to set up a server on Windows 10. So I know a couple of you were asked, well one of you was asking about a Windows 10 but I don't think it's any different to be honest with you. Um, so if I, if I get down to how to start it off then so um, I've already installed MariaDB um, that's in the link and in the actual comments uh, for my last video and uh, right, so we'll kick it off and do with the Heidi SQL so if you open it up and then so we'll, we'll make a fresh start and delete that so in the session name you do new and then you just name it whatever you want. I usually just do lif just to say it's life is feudal. And then the password is the password that you used when you actually installed MariaDB. Um, if you did change the user for that, then you'd put that in, in as well. So mine well, was just a nice simple password just to get it started. So in here, all you do is you go up to this top bit here and then right click and do create a new database and then you'll ask you for a name so if you just do lif underscore one and then you need to do the collation as uh, general well utf8 underscore general underscore ci and then you ok that and then you click on that the database you just created and then you go into the query tab and then what you need to do is if you go into uh, where your actual server files are so that's the uh, when you've downloaded it from Steam if you go into there and then you need to go into uh, which one is it into SQL folder and then you go to the new SQL file uh, usually that will just be a file and you won't be able to do anything but if you uh, double click on it uh, or single right click on it and there will be an open with just open it with notepad and then all you do is do control A and which highlights everything and then control C and then come back across to where your query is and then do control V to paste everything in there and then what you do you go up to the little run icon and then do the little down arrow and then make sure it's send batch in one go and then you run that and then when it's done it might come up with a warning sometimes it does sometimes it doesn't <coughs> but then if you expand this You might just need to refresh it first and then you expand it and then it should be about 13.1 megabits well, megabytes and then that's everything you need to do in there unless you want to upgrade like update it and then you just do exactly the same but with the patch so if we close the Heidi SQL don't worry about saving it and then what you need to do after that is if you go back into your life is feudal dedicated server go into the document or the docs folder and then right click on the my and then edit that and it should open up with notepad and then what you do is go into the start button go into all applications and then scroll down until you find a uh, where is it? I think it's MariaDB. There's it go. Yep. So you go to the MariaDB folder, and then you also go to the my.ini, and it'll open up the two. And what you're doing here is the ones that you opened up from the my uh, from the dedicated server folder. You copy all of this. And then you 
paste it between the MySQL in brackets and the client. So if you get if you see the client one, just press enter a few times to break take it down. And then all you do is you paste it in there, delete the duplicate MySQL D and then you uh, so this has been done previously so but I'm just showing again and then all you do is delete any of these that are duplicates of these ones and then you save the database or well, you save this in a and then you, so you just close that I don't I'm not saving it like I said I've done it earlier and then you should be able to run it <coughs> so uh, just close this down and then so if you go back into there firstly you just need to make um, your shortcut so you right click on the dedicated server or exe right click send to and then create a shortcut now I've already created a shortcut in the folder above which was this one so if you right click on that and do properties and then right at the very end of the exclamation mark if you do a single uh, just a little hyphen world ID space and then one and then OK that and then double click on it on the shortcut and that should come up and then it will start creating all of this as I said if this first bit here just appears and then disappears instantly uh, first thing to do is make sure you reboot the computer um, and then after that so if I close this down um, you need to make sure the MSSQR service is running now to get to that if you press um, so if you go to uh, let me so if you go to this, it usually has like a little file explorer or if it's got a file explorer in here. If you click on that, it'll just open up that. And then what you do is right click on this PC and do manage. <coughs> and it'll come up with this computer management. Um, so if we just expand that and then double click on services and applications. Double click on services. And then in here, if you scroll all the way down to my SQL, you need to make sure that service is running. Now I'll show you what happens if you stop it. So now that's stopped. And then what happens is if I try and restart it off, it should just disappear straight away like that. So the other one, so if I restart the service back off, and then double click again it should just carry on yep okay so the next one is uh, let's have a look so you just need to make sure that your Mario DB connection uh, in that any the my any is correct now what I'll do is I'll post the um, the form so the my any so if I go down to here, so MariaDB, and then I'll post this, all of this, into the uh, the details underneath the video, um, just to you know allow you to see exactly what I've done. But effectively, this should be what it looks like. If it's um, if it's not like this, then it'll most likely fail. So uh, if I say um, take a few of these bits out so if I cut a few of these out it probably won't be able to connect but oh, maybe I've got the wrong one well either way you just gotta make sure that's done so it's probably this one I think it's this one this is uh, I think it's that one yeah oh, okay never mind <laughs> just just make sure there's this is correct anyway so the other one is so uh, making sure that your UDP port 
caught uh, 28,000, 28,001 and 28,002 are all port forwarded. Now I'll show you how to do that. Um, so if you bear with me, I'll just bring up my... Uh, I am using a Asus router so I know it might not be the same for everyone else but um, this is how you would do it on this one. So what you need to do is if you go into the WAN in the advanced settings and then go to virtual server port uh, sorry virtual server and port forwarding tab and then in there make sure that the port forwarding is enabled <coughs> and then what you gotta do is if you put a service name in so uh, lift and then you do your port range so which is 28000 and then on this one you use a colon and then you do 28002 and then your local so it would be 19 the servers on 192.168.1.8 <coughs> and then you have it as UDP um, I'm just gonna put it as both just for now just to make sure it does work for you guys so then you add and then apply that And that's it for that. Um, let me just drop that back over there then. So, right. So the next one is um, obviously we've done that, and then I've showed you how to do those. And then join. So obviously now we've got um, the commands to actually join a game. So. I've got a game open already so what we'll do is we'll start the server off it'll take a, a moment to load up fully uh, one being it first time as well so so just give it a moment um, so Anyway, so to get onto the to actually start using the commands um, to get into where you use it, you do control and then it's the apostrophe, and it will bring up this command console. Um, other people have used the tilt key, which is the um, the button left one left of the uh, the one key, so um, that control and that one might bring this up instead um, so yeah so I'm not quite sure who's I think it depends on the keyboard layout that you've got okay so yeah, I'm just waiting for that still I should have probably started it off earlier <laughs> Now, what it is so you've got these two local ones here. Um, you've got join to remote server 127.0.0.1, and then you've got a colon with the port number that it's going to be on, and then uh, you do a, co like a, a semicolon with uh, the password in apostrophes. Um, obviously, if you've got a different password, you put the different password in there and then if you've got no password you just leave it as blank so you just leave it like that um, now there's nothing really any different between those um, effectively local host is 127.0.0.1 that that's all it means really it's just the uh, whatever's running on the local computer at the time these are the two commands you would use if say you're hosting the server on your own computer and you want to connect to it so you would use one of the, uh, either of these two if you're using um, like a, if you're gonna set up a server so your friends can connect from like outside 
then you would use um, like the same command but you would use like a different IP address so for instance um, your outside IP address could be anything like 82.24.36.201 for instance so like so like dot 32.40 I don't know 201 and then you would do the port again exactly the same and that would allow your friends to connect into your um, your server as long as the ports are forwarded correctly <coughs> now um, you can use uh, if say you're using um, a computer like say for me for example I've got my server running on a different computer within my own home I would use uh, the IP address of well the local IP address of that computer so that computer to me is uh, 192.168.1.8 and then that would allow me to locally connect to my server from another computer in my house okay now I don't know if this is d I think this is done now anyway it looks like it's been done for a while so anyway, so what we do now is if I open up my computer well the terminal again and then if I copy this command because like I said I'm trying to connect uh, locally to another computer uh, to a remote like a local computer on my network I paste in that in there and it should load me into the game yeah so I can create a character yeah so if I just full screen that and then do uh, is my name ah, so if I just do blue adder one and then uh, do that And then uh, I can just join the game now. <coughs> and then I'll drop in. Uh, you can tell if you join in the game because a lot of this will start changing and loads of green text, green, yellow, and red text will start popping up everywhere. Um, but at the moment it's got terraforming changes 4 of 9 so it's just taking a little bit of time to actually uh, load into it Yeah, I must admit, it's taken a long, lot longer than it did <laughs> from my last video. So I've added uh, quite a bit to the game. game hasn't crashed but uh, it doesn't matter uh, so do, do, do. ah okay so we're in yeah, so as you can see um, it's pretty much exactly the same as uh, for setting upon Windows 10 than it is for Windows 7 and 8 so um, so yeah so I hope you enjoyed this uh, tutorial.